Hello, we are the Geeks of Glory, and today we are talking about selection. Selection! Selection! Hey, I'm not so sure I like this. Now what exactly is selection, Dad? It's a good question. Selection is actually the process in which it can happen naturally, which is in nature, or artificially by scientists or plant growers to actually produce the certain traits that they want out of their plants or animals. Trait is a characteristic of something, just like I have hazel eyes. In animals, there can be all kinds of different traits. As a matter of fact, people have used selection to make a lot of different types of dogs. For example, together a Jack Russell Terrier and a Husky, we come up with a Husky Russell. And by breeding a Golden Retriever and a Poodle, you get a Golden Doodle. <laughs> Scientists have even been able to use selection to produce plants with the types of traits that they want. How do they do that? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is really quite simple. Let's say, for example, a scientist is wanting to produce a super hot jalapeno. It's going to take some time, but here's the process that he could use. First, he could grow a whole lot of jalapeno plants. And then once he gets them all matured where they're making jalapenos, he can go through and he can test the jalapenos off of each plant. After he has taste tested the jalapenos, he can then determine which one of his plants produced the hottest jalapeno. Next, the scientist could take the seeds from the hottest jalapeno plant and extract them. And then using the seeds from that hottest jalapeno plant, he can make a whole new crop of jalapenos that would produce peppers that were as hot as the ones that he extracted from. Now, to continue this process, the scientist can then take those seeds that he has planted that has produced new jalapenos, and he can test each one of those plants just like he did the first time. Now when he comes up to the hottest jalapeno of that second group of plants that he made, then he could take that plant and he could take the seeds out of there and grow a new crop with that even hotter jalapeno than the one that he had first. As if he does this continuously over and over again, before long he's gonna have a whole crop of some of the hottest jalapenos that you've ever tried. That's really cool, Dad. I bet you by doing that they can make cool jalapenos as well. Indeed. They can. In this pot, we have grown two different types of jalapeno. One, the regular typical jalapeno that you usually buy and eat, which has the hot flavor. And then another that looks exactly the same, but is called the Coolapino. Carter and I, to test out this selection, we are going to do a taste test with these two specimens. All right, so right here we have the jalapeno and the Coolapino. Now basically, if you were out looking in a garden and we're picking jalapenos, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two. I know this one's smaller, but that's because it's actually a younger plant. But if you look at them, they're both similar in color and actually in shape. Matter of fact, let's cut them open. This is the jalapeno first. If you look inside the jalapeno, it is filled with seeds. Now when you eat a jalapeno, that is usually what stores all the heat. That could be super hot. Now look at the coolapino. Let's see if it's any different than the jalapeno. I'm gonna cut it down the middle like this. Now if you look at the coolapino after we've opened it up, it really looks just about the same as the jalapeno. I know it's a little bit different in size because it's a different plant and it grew at a different rate, but it, by cutting it open, you can't really tell a difference. I wonder if we'll be able to tell a difference when we taste it. So now we're going to taste them and we're going to do the coolapino first. So I'll count down from three and then we'll eat them whole. Three, two, one. Tastes like a bell pepper. It really does. It just tastes just like a bell pepper. As a matter of fact, you have a little hint of the jalapeno in there as far as flavor, mm -hmm. but the heat is not there. I think through selection, scientists have been able to make a jalapeno without any heat. That's pretty amazing. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh! <coughs> oh my gosh, it was seriously hot. Oh my goodness. My eyes. <laughs> Don't touch your eyes. Milk. 
We'll be right back. Are you tired of sitting around with nothing to do? I'm so bored. Well, lucky for you, I have a solution. Look no further than... Books, the amazing entertainment medium that you can enjoy. Books can be read. Books can be smelled. And books can be used to drive knowledge right into your brain. If you're bored, look no further than the amazing books today. So as you can see, scientists have used selection to do many great things. Making super hot peppers like the last one we ate, and then making peppers that are just kind of cool, but they're good for the flavor. They could also do things like make different colors of flowers, or larger fruits, or different colors of apples, or sweet apples, or sour apples. So as we learn more about selection, just think about the time that you saw the two geeky guys eating a super hot pepper. Peace out. Peace!